Close Dual Agency, what is it and what do you need to know before entering into an agreement with an agent that is representing both sides? In New Jersey, we have different types of agency relationships when it comes to working with buyers and sellers in a real estate transaction. In short, they are broken down into these four categories. A seller's agent represents the seller. So if I'm representing you, the seller, this means that I will provide you with any and all material information provided to me by the buyer's side. My loyalty is to you, the seller. As a buyer's agent, I would represent the buyer. So on the flip side, if I'm representing you, the buyer, I will provide you with any and all material information provided to me by the seller side. My loyalty is to you, the buyer. A disclosed dual agent represents both parties, and this means that my loyalties reside with both the seller and the buyer, and I can't put either party's interest ahead of the others. Stick around, we're gonna talk more about this shortly. A transaction broker does not represent either buyer or seller, which means that I can share any and all information told to me by either party with either party. We're gonna leave that one on the back burner since we really don't use a transaction brokers in our area. And we're gonna dig deep into the disclosed dual agency scenario. So this comes straight from our consumer information statement, which is a document that we as realtors are required to present and explain to you before we decide to do business together. A disclosed dual agent works for both the buyer and the seller. To work as a dual agent, a firm must first obtain the informed written consent of the buyer and the seller. Therefore, before acting as a disclosed dual agent, brokerage firms must make written disclosure to both parties. Disclosed dual agency is most likely to occur when a licensee with a real estate firm working as a buyer's agent shows the buyer properties owned by sellers for whom that firm is also working with as a seller's agent or subagent. A real estate licensee working with a disclosed dual agent must carefully explain to each party that in addition to working as their agent, the firm will also work as the agent for the other party. They must also explain what effect their working as a disclosed dual agent will have on the fiduciary duties their firm owes to the buyer and to the seller. When working as a disclosed dual agent, a brokerage firm must have the express permission of a party prior to disclosing confidential information to the other party. Such information includes the highest price a buyer can afford to pay and the lowest price a seller will accept and the party's mot motivation to buy or sell. A brokerage firm acting as a disclosed dual agent will not be able to put one party's interest ahead of those of the other party and cannot advise or counsel either party on how to gain an advantage at the expense of the other party on the basis of confidential information obtained from or about the other party. So what does all of this mean to you? Regardless of who the real estate agent is on each side, if the brokerage is representing buyer and or seller in any transaction, so the brokerage represents both the seller and the buyer, remember that can be two totally different agents within the same brokerage. So there's one more type of agency that was not previously discussed because at the time of the original recording, it was not yet defined. It's called designated agency and you can use designated agency, whether you're a buyer or a seller in a disclosed dual agent situation. Still have questions on how disclosed dual agency will affect you? I'd be happy to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you to further explain. Send me a private message wherever you're watching this and let's chat.